Hey, welcome back to Lady Trady Australia. Today I am in my bedroom with my little helper once again, distracting him with some fairy lights over there. And what we're doing today is we are going to change the curtain situation in this room. The curtain rods haven't been attached very well and to be honest, I just don't really like it. So what I want to do, I've removed this one already as you can see. What I want to do is remove these and put a sheer light grey curtain across the entire wall. I'm just trying to make it look a little bit more glam in here. Um, but also have the ability to have that soft, subtle light coming through the sheer curtain. But I'm not a good sleeper and I need it to be dark. So blinds for me are an issue because all the way around the perimeter of the blind, as you can see, light comes in. So where this light comes in, I need to do something about it. Putting a shear across here is not going to solve that problem. The light will just subtly come through the shear. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to actually install another blind over the top of the existing blind. Now, if you were doing this on bare windows, you wouldn't even need this blind to begin with. Okay, so what I have actually done is I've purchased another blind it's also a white blind the same as the one that's already here um, but I've purchased it so that the width of it will go to the outside of the frame around the window and I'm actually going to install it the wrong way around so typically when you install a blind they drop really nicely like that what I'm going to do is I'm going to reverse that now it doesn't look as nice in appearance when you're looking at it, but what it will achieve is that it will sit flush against the window frame and limit the light that comes through the outside of the window frame, which is what I'm trying to achieve here. And when I have the shears going across on top of that, hopefully the goal is that when I have the block out blinds down, there won't be that light creeping in the sides and if I do want some subtle light to come through and still have privacy I can keep the shears closed but wind up the blinds behind them so that's the goal for today these are the sheer curtains that I am using Brampton House these are from Spotlight I just got two sets because I want to make sure that they have enough folds in them to look nice I'm just using these block out roller blinds also from spotlight and i got the longest curtain rod that i could find from spotlight as well it's extendable um, up to four meters Okay, so a few tips. Uh, firstly, with blinds, you get what you pay for. So if you buy cheap blinds, you're going to get cheap blinds. Um, <clears throat> I've probably gone for a, a mid-range price, um, but they're cheap blinds. That was okay for me because I've got really great quality ones underneath anyway. I just wanted these as an added extra to minimize the light getting in on the sides. So not a problem for me to purchase those blinds for this purpose. Um, so think about that when you go out and purchase your blinds and buy what is appropriate for you. So in a nutshell, I'm quite happy. It has sealed around my window. It's still a little bit curved. When they're brand new, you'll find that um, they curve up a little bit at the edges, but the longer that they hang, the the better that becomes so they do flatten out so it this is my window frame 
and um, they're sitting on the out of my window frame just to, to block that. Okay, so I have one more window to go. Now that my little helper is having a nap, I'll, I'll get onto this one. And I'm going to remove the existing curtain rod and curtain, which will leave holes like the previous one, which I'll need to repair at a later date. Um, and I'm just going to follow the same procedure. So I'm going to screw in the fittings first, and then I will place the caps on the end of the blind and then put up the blind, lock it into place. And that's it. And then after I do that, I will install my 3.5 meter curtain rod, which I'm actually going to install right along the top of that wall um, and then put my sheer curtains over the top. So stay watching and you'll see the finished product soon. Awesome. The next step, now that I have covered my windows with the blinds, is that I am going to install the curtain rod across the whole top of the wall and then slide my sheer curtains over the top of that. Depending on the size of your wall, um, you can purchase curtain rods that are the correct size. They might have two to three brackets like this that the rod sits on. Because I have a wall that is um, quite long, it's just under four meters in length, I bought an extendable rod which is what you'll find you'll have to do if you are over three meters in length. If you buy an extendable rod that is not very expensive and it has a small diameter, what you might find is that it bows in the middle um, or when you're opening closing curtains, there's movement there. So just be wary of that. There are a few steps involved in this. So I will explain the process to you and then you can watch me do it. So the first step is that you figure out where you want your brackets to be. So where you want the ends of your curtain rods to be. Now, I don't like my brackets to be right, sitting right at the end. I kind of like mine in a little bit. Um, and the reason I like that is because I like to put one of the eyelets of the curtain on the outside of the bracket to stop it from opening and closing. Um, so that's a personal choice of mine. So what I will do is I will screw these wall plates in. So what you do is you put them in the first position, screw those in. Now, if you are screwing into a stud, you can use self-tapping screws to just screw that in, making sure that it's perfectly vertical because that will support the weight of your rod and your curtains better. Then you slide a cover plate over the top of it and then you do the other end. Now, because I have a really long wall uh, and quite a heavy curtain rod, even though my curtains themselves are only shears, I have a third bracket which I will put in the middle of my wall. So I will do that again in the middle. I will find the central position of my wall by dividing the total length of the wall by two. I'll mark the middle and I will put my third bracket in the middle. Then I'm gonna go along to each of those plates with the curtain rod holder. There is an Allen key fitting underneath. So what happens is you slide, this is screwed into the wall by this stage. You slide this on over the top and using an Allen key, which is provided with most kits, you tighten that so that it's not gonna come on or off. So do that for all three, and then you're ready to go. So I've used a level as well by this stage to make sure that they are in the same position. If you don't have a level, don't forget, you can just measure using a measuring tape and make sure that each of those brackets is in the same position. So the same height from the wall or from the floor to the position on the wall or from the roof, in this case, that would be easier, from the roof under the cornicing to the position on the wall. And just make sure that in all locations, it's the same measurement. When you're happy with the position and you're happy with your rod, you can put your curtains on um, and that's obviously quite an easy process. 
slide them on. If it's eyelet, I prefer eyelet myself, but they all work, work in a similar manner. Slide your, them on and then you put it back up onto the brackets and there you have it, that should be it. So I'm gonna do that now. Now, if you're not drilling into studs, which in a lot of cases you won't be, the curtain rod should come with wall mates, which are these plastic fittings. Those can be pre-drilled using your drill and a drill bit to the size that it states in the packaging. Pre-drill a hole in your wall and then you insert these into the hole. So just pushing them in or lightly tapping them with a hammer so they go in. And then you can drill into these to hold up your wall brackets. And you just screwdriver those into the wall mates. And that will provide a more sturdy fitting and strength for that. And that's if you're just going into the plaster. finished I'm really happy with the way it turned out um, it's turned out much better than I thought well it's turned out exactly how I planned and had hoped which often is not how things turn out so I'm really happy with it I love the way the afternoon light is just subtly coming through around the outside of the blinds it made a big difference putting that second layer of blinds on in reverse because the afternoon light is just diffusing out those outer edges. Uh, there's two photos uh, in the video where you can see the difference and I'm really, really happy with the time and effort I put into this. So it was pretty much a full day's project so please factor that in when starting it. You might want to do it over a few days. It's up to you. A few things that I've learned. One, the biggest one, is I really need to invest in a stepladder. Trying to do that perched on stools and the bed and the bedside table was just ridiculous. I'm not very tall. Um, and when I was drilling far above my head, I found that really difficult. And I slipped a few times and marked the wall which I will have to go back and repair. So I really do need to invest in a stepladder. I mean, who doesn't? They're handy to have around regardless. Uh, the other thing that I thought I would mention was just the, the more glam look when you have it right up to the roof like that, as opposed to just sitting on the top of the window frame. It just looks so much nicer it's ceiling to floor um, and it's really worth paying the extra or doing the extra hard work to get it up that high. Now the other thing that I want to point out is that uh, sometimes it's hard to get curtains that do have the correct length ceiling to floor. Most curtains have a very wide hem at the bottom and the reason for that is that you can let it down. Okay, so they make curtains to fit a, a regular standard length If you sh at most stores like Spotlight and places like that. Ikea does extra long curtains, so they often have a good range of curtains for ceiling to floor for that reason. There's a, always ridiculously long. I usually end up trimming the bottom off when I purchase curtains at Ikea. These ones are from Spotlight. So they're regular length for Australian windows. 
um, but they do have this nice wide hem at the bottom so that you can let it down and gain yourself another three to four inches of curtain length. And that's what I will do with these curtains. So I'm going to go along now and just uh, cut the stitching that holds that hem up. It's usually quite loose for this very reason. And I will let them down so that they reach my floor. They're just a little bit up off the floor, so it's going to work out perfectly. I also need to go back and use some filler to fill the original drill holes from the original curtains. So that's just a matter of buying some filler from Bunnings or a hardware store and filling and then sanding that back. I have another video that shows you how to repair dents in walls and that can talk you through that process. I'm really happy with this. It's turned out beautifully and I hope yours does too.